uh, actually before I get into this subject, I'm going to show a video later on of my, like, laptop, well not laptop, my, uh, desktop, so you can kind of see all the really cool stuff I got on there, because I really do got some cool stuff on my computer. Um, yeah, what I wanted to say was, um, you know, there's a lot of K-pop fans out there, you know, it's like all other fans. Some are, some of them are alright, you know, like, oh, I like K-pop, you know, oh, I like this person. Oh, you don't like this person? It's okay. You know, those people are kind of cool to hang around with. But there are some people, though, if you say you don't like a certain someone, they get mad. I mean, not not really mad. I mean, like, you punched a baby and slaughtered their kitten or something. You know, that sort of psychotic madness. Where, like, I must, you know, defend their honor by murdering you. First off, uh, if you got that sort of mentality, you need to get a life. Seriously. If you get to a point where you're threatening someone's life because... You know, they like, uh, because, you know, they don't like your favorite SNSD girl. Then, yeah, get, get a life and maybe seek some sort of mental health. Because that's not normal. That's not normal to say, oh, you don't like this person in the group, but you like this other person. Uh, I'm going to kill you in your sleep, you know. Now, because I brought that up. I want you to know one little thing about me. Send me hate mail all you want. Do whatever you want. I care less. But I am not a big fan of SNSD. Sorry. Um, one, I think they're completely fake. It's like watching a bunch of Asian Barbie dolls up on stage. You know, they're not... They're wearing like way too provocative stuff to be aimed towards teenagers they're um, they've all had plastic surgery done even like SNSD fans can admit that some of them's had hmm, some work done you know that work I'm talking about um, you know so they've had so much plastic surgery done when they're plastic like Barbie is and then they don't play their instruments, they don't write the songs. Somebody tells them to wear certain outfits, somebody tells them how to dance, because these people couldn't dance beforehand. And then of course, they lip sync. And auto-tune on the album. They lip sync and live performance and auto-tune on the album. And there's always somebody who gets angry about that when you say, you know, I don't like groups that lip sync. Well, they have to lip sync because they're dancing. Really? Really? Just doing this, you gotta have somebody lip sync? Come on, you're doing this. No, not like you're doing a whole shaking thing. Not like you're doing the caterpillar, for Christ's sakes. And if you watch SNSD, some of the girls are literally not even, like, dancing. They're just kind of moving about like this. And they be lip syncing. And people are like, well, they have to do that because they're dancing. This isn't dancing. This is the I gotta pee sort of. This is the I gotta pee dance. Alright, this is the oh my bladder, oh my bladder. Um. Now, when you see people do that certain dance, now you're gonna forever link it with pee. You know, you see people like. You know, like I say, you hear that from people. Oh, well, they have to do that because they're dancing. Oh, well, what about auto-tuning? Well, they have to auto-tune because they they need to make sure that Tay Yeon or whatever her name is, uh, her voice can be broadcast a little louder than Yuna or whoever those girls are. And you're like, well, that doesn't make sense. I mean, you're not even an artist anymore. You're a puppet. They're basing your 
group and your whole franchise off an appearance. It's not based off any real talent. What do you think is going to happen to the girls in SNSD if they get like a, a cut on their head? You know, what if they get in like a car wreck? Or what if they, I don't know, get a wrinkle? You think they're not going to Botox the hell out of them and get some stuff done? And the weird thing is about K-pop, they're always talking about trainees. You know, they've been trained. Yeah. They rarely show photos of these people before they got, you know, owned by the label. You never see, like, okay, she was um, signed up as a trainee for SN Entertainment at 15. So here's a picture of her at 12. No, you don't see that. That's your, like, baby photo where you really can't tell them apart from the current person that they are. And they do that, and they're always sort of crafty about it. You never get to see what they look like before they became trainees. Because they don't want you to know, hey, wait a minute, uh, her nose is smaller now than it was when she was 12. Hmm. But, you know, I used to be a fan of K-pop. I used to, um, I used to be a fan of K-pop. I like K-pop way before, I know I'm going to sound like a hipster, but I like K-pop before everyone else started liking it. You know, I like K-pop when there was a Cleo and a Sharp and SES and G.O.D. and H.O.T. and Shinwa. There still is a Shinwa. Um, back when there was Clone. And, um, like one time in Junu Sean and, uh, JTL, yes. I like, I have JTL, actually. And, um, Turbo and I, for the life of me, can't remember anybody else. Zetskis, yeah. Zetskis was another one. I, you know, these were like my K-pop. I was into them before I was into Japanese music. You know, back when I was listening to all these K-pop groups, it was, uh, Miles Miser, Miles Miser. I keep saying Miles Miser, but it's, you know, my, I'm going to call it Miles Miser or Miles Miser. It don't matter. But it was Miles Miser and Larkin CL and TM Revolution. That was the, the Japanese groups, artists, performers, I was into versus K-pop. So it was a lot more K-pop. I was more involved with K-pop. Which was great for the time being. And then suddenly K-pop became so... Oy, you know? Suddenly it was, you know, K-pop's a huge wave in Peru. K-pop's huge in Russia. and K-pop's huge in Japan. And all that. Now suddenly K-pop's all over the place, everybody's liking it. And I just not found an interest in it anymore, you know? Um, I don't really know how to explain this. It's just, when I like K-pop, when I tell somebody, I like Korean music. If I said that online, there was a majority of people who like, Sex Kiss? Is that a German rock group? Yes, yes. Who says? <laughs> you know, there was a time where people didn't know who these people were. And so I felt, you know, I felt pretty awesome. You know, just being able to say, hey, I listen to something nobody else listens to. Which is borderline definition of a hipster in the genre field. But then suddenly everybody got into it. Now I go in there and I say, Oh, I like, um, mm, I like Mr. Simple by Super Junior. And suddenly, you know, a hundred people are like, Yeah, I know Super Junior too. <laughs> so, but, you know, again, with this, uh, holla, holla, hallelujah, hallelujah, whatever they call that, that, 
K-pop way. You know, this whole K-pop way that's going around. K-pop is fine in moderation. But when that becomes like the predominant thing, then it just loses its then it just loses its key value. It loses its core audience. It's no longer it's no longer the days where you know, unless you were a Korean American, you didn't know K pop, okay? There weren't that many non Koreans that non Korean, Korean American, non Korean speakers that knew like of Zetskis and Cleo and Sharp. But you know, now now it's like everyone. You know, now it's like now like people in Borneo knows about it, you know like But like I say, K pop should be done in moderation, but the labels are not putting it in moderation. They're putting it in just a mass overconsumption. Now think of K pop like cake, right? Everybody likes cake. Cake is awesome. But if all you ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks was cake, I mean, nothing else, nothing but cake. Cake shakes cake ice cream cake cake well after a while something that you like you suddenly get tired of it. you're like I don't want to have anything to do with cake I hate cake now I don't want to see cake I don't want to smell cake I don't want to taste cake I don't want nothing with the word cake on it I don't even want pancakes and everybody loves pancakes I like to take pancakes, hot pancakes, put some jam in between two layers of it and eat it as is. Maple syrup, you know, hurts me. But that's what K-pop is becoming. It it was once a it was once like a small club of people. You know, where to me the only people who knew K-pop were Korean Americans. You know, suddenly it was like, oh I know K-pop. My parents are from Korea. Now it's like I know K-pop. My parents are from Peru. Everybody knows K-pop now, and that's ugh. So anyway, you know, like I said, I'm not a, a huge fan of SNSD. I'm, I like groups that are different. You know, like uh, Twenty One and FX. But, you know, I'm not, like, a huge, huge fan of them. I don't go out and buy every album that they make and download all the videos that they make and go to all their concerts and follow them on Twitter if they even have a Twitter. Now, I like their songs. I like SNS some of SNSD songs, too. But I'm not a huge fan of them. You know, I listen to... Groups like, uh, well, Lock and CL, TM Revolution, uh, Miles Miser, uh, Gak. I like Alice Nine. I like, um, Daisy Stripper, On Cafe, uh, Blue Billion, Billion, I keep saying Billion. Um, God, Viceps, Vis Nips, whatever that's pronounced as, Viceps. Or oh, is it vivid? What well, is a visip and then there's a vivid. I like both. Um, yeah, but I listen. You know, I listen to a ton of them. I even listen to groups like AKB48, which was, you know, which was SNSD before SNSD was ever SNSD. So you know, I listen more or less to J Rock. And if you ever go to my Tumblr. You will see what I mean. So, you know, if you're gonna hate somebody for not liking a certain field of music, then, um, deal with it, you know? Because there are people who's into music that you might not be into. You know, you might be a K-pop fan, but not into, uh, but won't be into, like, cabaret music. 
What do some people who's fanatical about cabaret as you are about K-pop? So, you know, just try to get along with people. If they like something you don't, who cares? If they hate something you do, who cares? Alright? Just bond with each other.